Welcome to another live stream. Today Firefox started to release Firefox 95 and while they have not seeded that in their own update and are still preparing their release notes, we already updated that today in T2 Linux Hour Linux distribution live on the More Live channel earlier this morning. And uh, one major feature that is new and novel technique uh, I wanted to quickly point out is WebAssembly and back again fine-grained sandboxing in Firefox 95. So previously they sandboxed those tabs and mm, windows in separate processes to isolate websites rendered and displayed from each other. And now they also uh, use a technique called te te sandboxing te new sand sand sandboxing technology they call uh, RLBox. Developed in collaboration with research at the University of California, San Diego and University of Texas that allegedly makes it easy and efficient to isolate subcomponents on a not this process level. And I was shocked when <laughs> improved security with this shocking technology. I was shocked when I read earlier what they're doing there. Um, I'm not yet really sure how I would value that. but. Um, they say it opens up new opportunities beyond what they currently do with traditional process-based sandboxing. Namely, they don't sandbox that in processes, but in this te technique they use WebAssembly to isolate potential, potential buggy code, aka all code, <coughs> and um, specifically libraries like Graphite, Huntspell, Org, Exp, basically, basically obviously all libraries, right? All code potentially buggy, all libraries potentially buggy, even Rust because um, logic bugs and unsafe code. But anyway, so uh, what they do here is a little bit crazy. Um, and in a way, I, I'm, sh I'm between shocked and admiring their um, ideas. Also, actually, it's not that far-fetched. They, what they've do, done here is now um, b simply building untrusted, aka potentially all, all code untrusted, right? <laughs> but starting with this five, uh, libraries, um, not compiling it natively, but to WebAssembly, right? Which of course is not really that novel and that, mm, yeah, because obviously people build probably LVM into the browser or even I've seen uh, while quirk or so of FPGA open source fame, even building um, Yosis or so uh, with WebAssembly for the web and, and distribution. So. The idea of compiling C and C++ code, of course, not um, novel. However, uh, what they do here now is um, twofold. First of all, using this as soft light, soft sandboxing, and whether that is totally secure, we will see in the next years to come, right, live here on this channel. But additionally, they also compile this back to um, native machine code. So they're actually not distributing WebAssembly code of those libraries starting with this for five different modules in the future more probably um, and they use here they somewhere wrote maybe we will see this in a second they use they could use a crane lift or in this prototype they use crane lift which they write here also somewhere is amazing but um, they didn't want to have this added complexity so they are using web assembly to see wasm to see to simply compile this generate oh, yeah, the crazy crazy infrastructure right complexity first we had software bugs um, in complexity now we have more complexity previously you needed one compiler to build a project like firefox now you need your system compiler and definitely clang um, also rust and uh, web assembly and back to c again and um, so they are compiling also yeah crazy stuff you would think what does it add for security if you build C and C++ code to WebAssembly and then transform that back to C again. And uh, this is adding uh, sanitized pointers and um, isolated address space ranges for those subcomponents. Uh, they somewhere there continue so that those modules run all in their own address space um, sanitized by um, this WebAssembly to um, C family of languages via WebAssembly back to C infrastructure so that um, Firefox um, also isolates those um, module components here so that um, awk for audio files and uh, graphite for some fancy fonts and stuff uh, cannot be ho hopefully not or not as easily um, be used to exploit your browser. 
To keep the users secure against the most well-funded adversaries, they need multiple layers of protection. Yeah, previously you had sandboxes, um, tab and window and stuff, sandboxes. Now you have also module soft WebAssembly soft sandboxes. We will also see how um, well this, I, what I call now soft, soft boundaries of um, code translated via WebAssembly to, yeah, compiling C and C++ to maybe safer code via WebAssembly 20. Welcome to 2021. Historically, yada yada, something, something. So this project is called RLBox and you can use this on your own. Uh, here's also some documentation. So that is, of course, on GitHub from these universities. And um, so what they, this, however, of course, comes with some performance penalty, not only um, compiling C through WebAssembly to C again, um, or actually C++ too, but um, as I write here, um, you can't pass complex structures in there, so uh, to avoid that you end leak pointers, you need to allocate stuff like font structures that you pass to your more soft secure, soft sandbox components with uh, somewhere they have here uh, secure allocate or something. Um, here, for example, uh, ensure sandbox libraries memory isolated from the rest. Also, yeah, ensure that sandbox, I need, I need to look into the implementation details, how secure that really is, um, we will see. Cannot directly, so allegedly the library cannot directly access memory outside of the uh, designated region. Um, again, I wonder if they, although may, yeah, maybe they do this through WebAssembly, and ensuring that um, due to that translation process, ensuring that you cannot have like random pointers pointing somewhere else, probably, which is why I call the soft sandbox. Boundary crossings are explicit, ensuring that the library cannot, for example, corrupt the Firefox address space. Also, um, in a way, this is crazy, which is also why I wanted to show it. Also, not only is you can use this as your own in your own project, um, I have some questions though. So the first thing is, if this is more secure, should we build all code like that? Like should all, also, so if we have this technology, so, and if this is better, maybe we will see, um, shouldn't we build all modules like that? And then I would also wonder, which I already in my microkernel stuff, which <clears throat> yes, we will continue soon now that we have T2 Linux in such an amazing shape, more live videos. Um, I was anyway thinking and yeah, my previous microkernel stuff, design stuff from two years ago, JIT everything, right? Also for me, the single instruction multiple data, each process generation has some new single instruction multiple data. So my idea was also even for performance, right? For performance and automatically using scalable vector extension, um, JITing everything. And then the next question is, if we anyway want to JIT this, for example, in my hypothetical microkernel system, um, why don't we, and I was actually thinking this already, not for security, but for portable distribution. Um, why not, web, web, for example, WebAssembly. WebAssembly is not perfect. I was thinking, should, be, should I roll my own or should I use WebAssembly until I hit performance marginalities and then maybe fork it and, and do my own variations of that. But if this security researcher now say, hey, we can use this for more secure libraries, then I wonder in a potential from scratch new system, Maybe we should, by default, isolate all libraries like setlib, like um, set standard, like free type, like graphite, and so on, um, through such means, um, which, yeah, wishful thinking, some, some ideas here for free live on this channel. Um, so they write somewhere that this works, for example, memory enforced underlying sandboxing mechanism, from the start where you create a sandbox with create sandbox, explicit under crossings are enforced, as a compiler runtime, you can't call a library function directly, instead you must invoke sandbox function. Of course, this comes with a security penalty, right? I mean, as microkernels, nothing comes for free. So which probably answers the question, maybe we don't want to sandbox all library modules because performance is we want a single address based monolithic Linux kernel for performance. But yeah, I wonder, however, if, I mean, similar to this JIT stuff, I always said C is not amazing, right? Um, and um, I wonder then if 
in 2021 if we design a whole operating system kernel and user space in completely modern ways if it not would not be useful for performance portability sync basically this is java on steroids steroids right java done more amazing more performance um and more security um, also of course right now all those components are all scattered over various projects it's not like you have lvm or rust and have these components do that automatically so currently you need to take lvm um, set up here with for example this rl box um, as in firefox so it's not like easy integration as in one compile one make file or other mason build system switch and it does that automatically for you but yeah and um, they also write here just as i outlined previously um when calling a library function rl box copies simple values into the sandbox also here copy so yeah does not come for free right so one additional copy there plus whatever sandbox setup overhead coding the function for larger types such as structure and arrays this simple path pointer to the object that would leak a uh, as lr address space space randomization um, and more importantly would not work sandbox code cannot access application memory so you must explicitly as i mentioned some five minutes ago allocate memory in a sandbox via malloc in sandbox and copy application data to the region of memory for example with string and copy in case it is a string obviously otherwise um, mem copy or stuff so um yeah or i wonder if it works for performance reason because obviously everyone wants performance if you can directly work with it right malloc and sandbox and log like not string or mem copy but malloc in sandbox and use this natively to actually fill in your values as aka working copy no idea anyway um, so that is uh, this project on github that you probably want to use if you want to use it what else did i wanted to show it out here um, so it's basically just another um, in-depth blog post here from Firefox and yeah, C, C++, uh, notorious, difficult to use safely, <coughs> as we currently mentioned here on the, live on this channel. And, and as I mentioned already, should not be used for 30 years, but uh, what do I know? And so here we are 2021, we are compiling, as mentioned here, new approach, compiling this um, to via WebAssembly and I think here it was mentioned um, building a WASM sandbox and um, here you find more details if you're interested in, the, in these details um, Clang LVM got you covered there ahead of time compilation with Cray yeah, they previously used crane lifts but bytecode is alliance loosened compiler and runtime but and uh, now they mentioned you somewhere that was to C, so WSM2, no, no, whatever, so that was. So yeah, leave in the comments below what you think, as that is latest and greatest at security. Um, this technology is too new for me um, to review, like in one afternoon. I also, yeah, don't really have the time. I wonder how secure that really is. Leave me in the comments below um, if you're a security researcher or otherwise have some um, input but of course the usual um, applies performance performance and performance of course there is some loss questions are how much over do you think if that kind of sandbox would have would the code size increase well the uh, code size of course increases a little bit at least I'm I'm, um, I'm not sure how op optimized the WebAssembly translation is maybe that also is like if, if you compare this to GCC I would naturally assume compared to GCC or Clang, uh, CPU native, O3, optimize the heck out of it, this translation process with more pointer checks and runtime checks and stuff, probably at least some 10, 20% slower potentially maybe, um, plus this additional sandboxing, sandboxing overhead. So um, if you copy all this data, it depends how much data you copy in and out and if like if the algorithm is small and only works a little with this data like setlib then the additional copy could be significant um, like another 10 10 20 30 40 50 percent most stuff is most algorithms like font libraries of course a little bit more heavyweight so maybe the overhead is only 10 percent but again it depends on 
um, the data. For example, Oc Audio that is also relatively lightweight, so uh, maybe for the case of Oc uh, Audio here, let's see, right? Uh, yeah, this Oc. Um, I, I would think in some cases it could be quite significant. However, this is if you micro benchmark this, you should also not forget if you compare performance. We speak here about this one single case of this single library function in the grand scheme of things in a browser. This might again only a percentage of um, the code sync or the JavaScript it is running, which uh, ironically is also already sandboxed. So we basically have we have a process sandbox, a JavaScript sandbox, a and now per library soft sandboxes. Um, yeah, I also wonder, I mean, theoretically, I wonder a little bit though, um, as they would have native WASM support, I wonder why, if the browser has already native WebAssembly support, uh, why you would not ship these libraries as WebAssembly. Although maybe also for legacy compatibility, so that they, they wrote somewhere not to change the build system uh, so much. Um, so... Uh, they somewhere wrote, um, yeah, here, like, uh, here's also probably this crane lift in WSM2C, yeah, WSM2C, um, and maybe, because I would think also for my point of jitting stuff to more optimized single instruction, uh, light, uh, single, instru uh, single, instru single instruction multiple data, think AVX 512, which Linus Torvalds and I don't really want, but it is there. Um, potentially optimizing to that eventually, but they write here also for simplicity, right? And and integrating in the, in the build system. So um, basically, they set up their Mach build system so that they compile those modules instead of natively um, to WebAssembly and um, compile that back to equivalent C code. So, and, and feeding that back into Clang. So, I guess, yeah, also as they write, this approach is very simple. Yeah, your mileage may vary. It's somewhat sim simple, I would call it, but automatically enables a number of important features, such as profile guided optimization, inlining across sandbox, also inlining across sandbox boundaries. How safe is it? That sounds somewhat, somewhat inherently unsafe. Crash reporting, debugger support, source code indexing, and likely other things. They have not uh, we fear to appreciate. So yeah, mm, I, I would, however, think it could be simpler or beneficial. I mean, basically, if they would not have this WASM2C, it would be a little bit of my potential future dream system of shipping portable Java-like bytecode for um, on system just in time compilation and, and um, because then you naturally have that in the WebAssembly sandbox. But anyway, it will be interesting to see. For me, this has already the consequence. Do I have this still around? Probably I have. We had, um, did I commit this already? Oh, this also built, um, um, except that uh, the secure shell pipe broke. <coughs> um, let me just look into this. Yes, I know this was uh, black because I don't want I not um, I, sh I should at utmost protect my globally rooted IPv6 addresses. So um, did I commit this? Maybe oh, I committed this. So um, what I need to investigate is I needed a new build system. So this arrowed out for me because uh, each thing new. Um, I slightly wonder. This is probably disabling this feature, I guess. So if we build this at T2 with that feature, I guess we don't even get that because that a rod out to at once a sandbox for this. So yeah, some more research even to building this is required as all the new distributions usually don't ship the Firefox upstream build things. So actually I need to investigate what the heck is going on with this, uh, this route for this stuff. So yeah. Um, hmm. Anyway, that's it for the video. Um, our security news card 
podcast, which we will resume shortly. We will see in the future how secure this really is. Looking forward already to security researchers biting their teeth out of this. And um, yeah, as usual, I'm looking forward to your comment. What do you think about this? Are you into compiler technology and security? What are your thoughts to this? Um, how safe can this really be? Performance security. And um, yeah, 2021 <laughs> IT industry um, and security researchers, developers still working on the latest and greatest sandboxing technology. That's all I have for you today. I hope you learned something and don't forget to share, like, subscribe for all the next videos and live streams to come.